Thank you. The main characters live in a small town where nothing exciting happens. The little boy who goes to middle school is weird and everyone at the school thinks he's crazy. When he's not getting picked on at school, his life at home isn't any better. He only has one parent in the household, so there's no strong male influences in his life to teach him how to toughen up. His mom tries as hard as she can. She gets him a costume for Halloween, and this is when his world turns upside down. Halloween is already a dangerous holiday when you have to worry about psychos poisoning the candy. But now they have to worry about learning the difference between the real monsters and the costumes on the street. A doorway between our world and another is open and the split allows monsters to enter, putting every character in the story in danger. The little boy goes trick-or-treating. Him and the creature are connected, and whatever he sees, the creature sees, vice versa. He has an episode, and the other trick-or-treaters don't understand what's happening to him, so they panic. This isn't the only time he's mentally attacked by the monster. This happens at the part where he runs through the field at school for his life, like he's seen a ghost. The monster might as well be a ghost because at times, only the crazy kid is able to see the demon. If there's something strange in your neighborhood, who you gonna call? Probably the government, to be honest. A secret government agency learns about the monsters and tries to keep the information under wraps. They have a headquarters where their top minds work tirelessly night and day running experiments to discover the monster's powers and weaknesses. They study the monsters night and day and learn almost absolutely nothing. Since the boy is connected to the beasts, he leads the predators right to his location. After that, the government building gets attacked by the predators. They kill all the workers, so whoever decided to call in sick that day is extremely lucky. Speaking of luck, key characters are able to escape the facility in one piece. The creatures hide out way out in the middle of the woods. They have these ugly looking dogs that are incredibly fast and really, really hungry. So it would be a stupid idea for any humans to try to face them head up. One of the dogs makes friends with one of the team members. I guess that's why you call them man's best friend. The team regroups at the house. The house isn't a comfortable place to die or live for that matter. There's these strange drawings all over the place and it makes everyone uncomfortable. We later find out the boy's drawings ends up being a map to the creature's headquarters. If they were smart, they'd use this map to figure out the locations to avoid and let the military handle it. But they use the map to chase down the creatures instead. Before they go to war, there's an interrogation scene and it takes place where one of the characters is held hostage and forced to answer these questions about the creatures. I'm rarely an advocate of questioning someone when their lawyer's not present, but I'm willing to make an exception this time since the fate of the world depends on it. They learn the kid is the one who could open and close the doorway, so they get the kid to the gate. After the creature is defeated, the soldiers and the kid work together to avoid this ever happening again. You would like to think their prevention plan is going to work, but you know it's not because we get a tease at the end that proves the studio wants to add more chapters to the story. Those are 24 reasons these movies are the same. You agree? Yes, no, maybe so? If not, politely share your thoughts in the comment section below and click the subscribe button for more 24 reason videos. <gasps> Best elevator music I've ever heard.